Hi, this is James Braithwaite at Braithwaite Physiotherapy, helping you to move beautifully. Today, we're going to talk about squatting, and specifically, deep squatting. Squatting where my level of knee flexion gets beyond about 120 degrees. The knee flexion being the amount of bend that you have in your knee. Why would you want to do that? Well, the very good reason to squat into deep ranges is that we know that we get better glute activation in those deep ranges. And hey, we want to work our glutes. It's useful. It's fun. It works. So yeah, you want to deepen, uh, squat into deep ranges, but there's a good question around are the forces that are generated in the knee in those deep ranges problematic? Are they gonna cause injury problems? And it's true that both compressive forces, meaning the forces compressing the various joint surfaces and tensile forces, shear forces that stress ligaments are higher in those deep ranges of squat, but are they high enough to cause a problem? And the short answer to that is, thankfully, no. Uh, your ligaments can handle those types of loads and many times over. Even heavily loaded deep squats, your ligaments are designed to take those loads and more. So for a healthy knee, there's no problem concerning ligament rupture or anything like that into a deep range. And similarly, your cartilages and your menisci should be able to handle, in a healthy knee situation, the types of compressive loads that are introduced in a deep, even heavily loaded squat. But there's a caveat and nuance like there always is, and that is what should we do when we already have an injury? So if you have an existing ACL injury, or you have um, a patellofemoral pain syndrome, or maybe some mild arthritis that flares up from time to time, what should you do in those cases? Well, that's not a perfectly healthy knee situation, and those are the cases, especially if there's flare-up around those injuries, where you may want to consider some modifications. And let's talk about a few, let's say four or five easy modifications that you might do to help you manage compressive forces or tensile forces in your knee uh, when you are squatting. So, specifically, we're going to consider changing the way that we load our squat. So most people, Although you don't have, I mean, there's many ways to load a squat. You can do a back loaded squat, right, like so. Sometimes people will hold, say, a kettlebell, right, as they do their squat, something like this. Um, many, many ways to load a squat. One thing we do know about a traditional bar loaded squat, though, is that using a, a front rack, like so, Loads the, are loads to the knee with compressive forces less than using a back rack. So one simple modification that you can consider in your squat is doing a front rack versus a back rack. And there's a little bit of technique uh, that it takes to execute with a front rack type position. So it's something that you might want to consider practicing initially with light loads. So this is just a 15 pound bar, and that's something that you might want to practice with for some time before you start to load that up heavy. And it's beyond the scope of this video to talk about the sort of nuance of technique on a front squat, but if you check the internet, um, there will be reams of uh, videos on YouTube or articles that uh, can give you some instruction. Or better yet, talk to your physiotherapist or talk to a personal trainer about how to execute properly a front squat. So there's one option for you. <clears throat> Okay, secondly, execute your, your um, squats slowly. That means two to three second descents. We know that when squats are executed with slower cadence, the compressive forces in the knee are lower. So think one steamboat, two steamboat, three steamboat push as a cadence rather than down up, right? Keep it, um, keep it slow and controlled. Uh, plyometric type exercises, jump squats, those types of things, introduce higher compressive forces into your knee. So if you're already struggling with, say, um, some, kind of, some type of um, articular issue, like a patellofemoral pain syndrome or an arthritis, and you want to reduce the compressive force in your squat, keep it slow, avoid the plyometric type exercises. Two to three seconds on the way down, and at least one or two seconds on the way up. You can be a little bit faster on the way up, but slow and controlled on the way down. Foot width is another consideration. So keep your foot width to between 90 and 120% of your hips, okay? So somewhere around hip width, like so, rather than a wide stance or a sumo squat stance 
um, type squat. And again, that's to reduce the compressive forces in your knee. We know that the, those forces are reduced in narrower stances. So think hip width rather than say sumo width. There are other reasons why you might want to consider doing a sumo width squat, namely, for example, to help you to manage uh, shear forces in your back. But if it's something you have a question around, talk to your physiotherapist, okay? But again, that, that narrower stance is a consideration for you to modify to reduce compressive forces in your knee. Obviously, uh, try to avoid squatting when you're tired. When you're tired, your ability to control and stabilize your knee through your squat is reduced. So just like if you're doing any sport, skiing, playing volleyball, what have you, Avoid doing it when you are bed, dead tired. If your legs feel like jelly, that's not the time to do heavy, deep squats. So just, I mean, it seems like such common sense, but common sense is uncommon, as the saying goes. So if you've got an issue um, around uh, fatigue, you know, this is not the exercise to put in at the end of your workout. So just bear that in mind. Um, balance, balance of your muscular training. So. Um, Make sure that you're including a healthy amount of hamstrings dominant and quadriceps dominant exercises uh, in your workout. Don't ignore the hamstrings. Um, have both squats and uh, deadlifts, right? So that you can um, train both sides of your thighs. Make sure that you get some hip thrusters and some uh, 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 bridging type exercises perhaps into your workout so that you can train your glutes. Don't forget your calves. Your calves also help to stabilize uh, your knee, specifically the gastroc muscles, the gastrocnemius muscles. So, um, you know, calf raises, those types of things. Um, you know, using a calf machine, you know. Don't forget to be balanced in your lower extremity strength training. That stuff matters. Uh, so don't forget that as well. So between those few things, trying, you know, a, a front-loaded squat rather than a back squat, um, slow in your cadence, watching um, the width of your feet and focusing on a closer to hip width style stance, um, avoiding squatting when you're fatigued and remembering to be balanced in your strength training so that you have a, a good strength in all muscles supporting the knees. All of these factors are relevant for uh, managing tensile and compressive forces in your knees. So the take home message from this video is that Yes, you can do a deep squat. It is not damaging to a healthy knee. However, if you're worried because you have an existing injury and you want to manage the compressive and tensile forces in your knee until that injury clears up, consider these modifications that we've suggested today. If you want to learn more about this, check out the article that I've written, which will be linked in the description below the video. There's a much more detailed discussion of these factors and that'll give you a little bit of background and context on this discussion, as well as some further references and reading materials you can check out on your own if you really want to impress all your friends. So check that stuff out. Um, don't, burn, don't ignore your deep squats. As long as your knee is in healthy condition, you can enjoy that exercise. It will help you to uh, activate glutes uh, in a manner that shallower squats won't, so it's worth doing. Have fun with that. If you have questions about this or any other physiotherapy-related um, issue, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm James Braithwaite of Braithwaite Physiotherapy, helping you to move beautifully.